Theo Vaughn is much smarter than you think, even though throughout his comedy he portrays an undeniably funny guy who isn't the most intellectually gifted. And I'm not the brightest, you know, bowl in the bowl drawer, you know? <laughs> Whether he's on stage or on a podcast, Theo Vaughn is never the same character. He is constantly changing. So is the Theo Vaughn we see online really the same guy off stage? And has he actually lived such a crazy life? She said she had a nice evening, but that her boyfriend wasn't in town, that he's never in town. Then she goes, what happens in taxis stays in taxis. <laughs> Whenever Theo appears on stage, I'm confident that he will share a crazy story and make it funny. Until you and six kids you barely know in wet bathing suits have surrounded nine chimpanzees outside of a Wendy's, you probably really don't know yourself, okay? And most of the time, it's the same on his podcast. Like, my shit's shaped like the piece that lands back on Earth after the shuttle goes up. You know what I'm saying, bro? So? When I clicked on his Trump interview from a few weeks back, I was expecting the usual dopey, funny Theo Vaughn, but what I saw was not what I expected. During the opioid epidemic, um, they estimate that like almost 600,000 people died. Yeah. And, and that doesn't even include the broken hearts and the deaths of families and um, circles of trust, all, you know, just people that lost a brother doesn't even include the right. actual the, the siblings right or, you know and so the ripple effect of that is huge now i know theo usually discusses addictions and drug problems on his podcast but he wasn't his usual self at first i didn't think much of it but then i watched his podcast with jd vance you know you can't even do cocaine in this country anymore you know <laughs> and that seems like a crazy thing to say and don't say that, don't say that, I, but I said it, but... Theo did show signs of his normal self, but as the podcast went on, he was acting out of character. One of the major bipartisan issues that's plaguing Americans is the healthcare system, which has become um, outrageously expensive, right? Sure. It's, uh, it's unaffordable, it's inaccessible by millions of Americans. Um, we're overpaying hospitals and insurance companies that hide their prices. Yes. And they charge us whatever they want. Yeah. Patients overpay, workers overpay, uh, companies overpay, the taxpayers overpay. Um, on this podcast, Bernie Sanders came on and he stressed the need for health care price transparency. Um, Donald Trump did the same thing. He had an executive order. After watching the Vance podcast, I took myself to the Theo Vaughn subreddit to see what other people's opinions on the podcast were, because I felt like I saw a new side to Theo when he was with Trump and Vance. This led me down a rabbit hole, and after five hours of reading comments, I stumbled across an interesting thread titled, We all know Theo makes up almost 100% of his stories, right? This caught me off guard, because I knew he may exaggerate his stories to make them more interesting. Actually, I got a pepper stuck in my ear when I was young and uh, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of ways people naturally take peppers into the body dude. right right when you take it through that you know past that lobe over that freaking lobe baby that's uh that's some absorbent tissue in there. oh dude uh, you know you never really hear the same and you always hear fire trucks after that I was in court the other day and this black guy pleaded my bad <laughs> and I was like yeah dude it is on in here right and I was up right after him for DUI, and I wanted to be cool, so I pleaded, blame it on the a -a 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 alcohol. <laughs> but it never occurred to me that his jokes are entirely made up. Like in that clip, he talks about being in court, which I can believe is true, because he has actually struggled with addictions in the past, and he has run into legal troubles because of it. And in this subreddit, one user said, I think a lot of people don't realize that when you grow up in a poor area and you have nothing better to do with your time other than be outside, you really do see a lot of crazy shit. I think Theo's genius is in taking situations he's experienced and sharing it with his audience with just enough ambiguity that it makes us question, did that shit really happen? I can agree with this, but I was still shocked with the person who questioned the legitimacy of all of his stories. So I looked into some of them to uncover the truth. So, the next time he said, well, why don't you just come next time and watch a, watch a football? I said, okay, Big Richard, I'll come over. So I go over there, he, he breaks out some weed, right? I'm like, I smoke weed, sure. and, you know, I'm a child, I smoke weed. <laughs> so next thing you know, we're puffing out, you know, getting gassed out with Big Richard, baby. And uh, he told me, bring your buddies over, bring your buddies. So now me and all my buddies are over there. And then 
Smoking weed as a kid with a substitute teacher is unusual, but it is definitely understandable when you consider where Theo grew up. 16 years old, we're at Marilyn Manson. Like, uh, we're fucking living our yeah, dream. Yeah, yeah. So one time we're over there eating steaks at his house, and my buddy Scotty is in the other room, and uh, I went in the kitchen to get something. And and it, Scotty yelled at me. He goes, hey, man, can you get me some sour cream? Because I had a baked potato come with a sure, side item. Sure. He goes, hey, can you get me a uh, some sour cream? And I said, no, but you can have some of this sweet cream. I was oh, joking. Yeah. Semen. <laughs> Thanks so for then, clarifying that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So Big Richard's in the other room, bro. And I hear him go. Can I have some? <laughs> this is where it gets weird. And what he said next made me question the whole truth of his story. And that's when all of our brains were just like, Whoa. Oh, no. Bro, no. you could feel all oh, fucking no. four of us it, that were over there. It all started yes. to connect. Oh, my God. And we're like, what are we doing? <laughs> we are high. So then it you became like. You were on a like, date, by the way. If you went to that and then afterwards at steak, you were on a date. <laughs> we didn't think of it, man. That's oh how pedophiles God. get you, man. Because you don't think it's a, a thing. You don't think it's a date. You think it's just <laughs> eating steak at, with a man. When did he bring the shack cards out? So then after that, it started getting like, you know, I'll take one of y'all to Vegas if you want to go. Just big offers, you know. And I mean, we're just a small town, so it's like, dude, you want to go to Vegas? We'd never even heard, you know, we'd seen a, maybe a drawing of Vegas or somebody screaming or somebody, you know, yelling it while they're beating their wife or whatever, you know? But we'd never been to Las Vegas, so everybody, you know, buddy of mine took a trip with him out there. Now, the likelihood of someone actually going on a trip to Vegas with a substitute teacher they smoke weed with is very small. I was beginning to understand why someone claimed Theo makes up 100% of his stories. However, I didn't want to believe that one of my favorite comedians has been lying to me about his entire life, so I looked into it further. After many hours of searching, I eventually found a website that might just prove what Theo said was actually true. The website was aimed at tackling the Catholic clergy abuse crisis, so I searched searched the website for a Richard from Covington, Louisiana, and I was shocked with what I found. There was an article from 1998 that was titled Veteran Teacher Sued Over Teen Sex Case, Gifts, Nude Photos, Among Charges. This seemed to be in line with the story Theo was describing, so I read the whole thing, which stunned me. The article was about a lawsuit filed in state court in Covington, Louisiana, about a man named Richard Longenstein, and then it clicked. This is exactly where Theo is from, and it makes sense that they called him Big Richard because this guy was 62 years old at the time. One line said, The suit alleges Langenstein ingratiated himself with the teenager by buying him expensive gifts and alcoholic beverages and giving the boy money. The teacher also allowed the teenager use of his BMW convertible, the suit states. The article went on to say, Langenstein gave the gifts because he planned to sexually abuse the teenager, the suit says. During the summer of 1996, Langenstein enticed the teenager with money and clothing to accompany him on a casino gambling trip to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, the suit states. So it turns out Theo was right. Even though it wasn't a trip to Vegas, it was a gambling trip, and his substitute teacher was actually a pedo. This reinstilled my confidence in Theo's stories, but it didn't convince me fully. So I looked deeper into another story of his. Billy Conforto was one of the first real men that I ever met in my life, and he was, you know, he was good to me. He was protective of me. And he, you know, when other kids would do me wrong, he would fight them. And I guess in hindsight, it's a little weird to think a 35-year-old man was fighting children. But, you know, where I grew up, that was what it was what it was. This sounds like a very questionable story. And when Theo said... His name was Billy Conforto, rest in peace, because he ate a bunch of pills years later. And he drove a car into an um, embankment out there in Laplace, Louisiana. This made me think, would Theo lie about someone dying just for a good story? After a few Google searches, I found an obituary of a person named William Henry Mintz Jr. I then read the comments on his guest book and saw multiple R.I.P. Billy Conforto comments, but they were posted from 2022 onwards and one was supposedly commented by John Cena, so this confused me, and I was still unsure whether this story was legit or not, and if Theo had made up an imaginary character to fit his story. So, I went to the subreddit to get the depth of it, and I saw a comment by Lossy P saying, I remember a few years ago, somebody on this sub found a real article about Billy Conforto and the embankment. I then searched the comments for this article, 
and found a link that took me to a Reddit page with a screenshot from ABC News. It read, Man dies of heat exposure after crashing car off embankment in California's Death Valley National Park. And this can't be Billy Conforto because Theo says he died in Louisiana. So now I was more confused than ever, and unsure if the people in the subreddit even knew the truth. I then went back to YouTube where I came across this video. All right, guys, right now we're going to give a call to my boy old Chad over there. And he was really close with Billy Conforto and... You know, I remember Billy, he really... Billy was a beautiful fellow, man. One of the only homosexual men that ever stood up for me. Praise God, bro. We miss you, man. He's upstairs, dog. Fortunately for us, this guy actually answered. Dude, yeah. thank you so much for... Uh, for jumping on with me today man i just you know everybody on the podcast man loves billy man everybody loves billy conforto and misses him and and misses him being alive man i just want you to can you share with me just a good billy story or something yeah what well, you sure, sure. I, I, I listened to the one when y'all was um you was talking to billy's brother chucky or whatever oh yeah no, it's yeah. When well, y'all was talking about you and Billy used to go out and use my my name, my ID. Oh yeah, did we use your? Well, the part <laughs> my ID, I lost mine, and Billy was always he used anybody's ID. They discussed many of their happy memories with Billy Conforto, and they showed a picture of what looked to be an old boxer at the time. But if you if you, you needed something, he'd help you out. He'd give you his laugh. Yeah, he would, man. He would give you one of his legs, bro. If he had a fucking. <laughs> If he had a wooden leg, he'd give you that bit so you could row a boat. Yeah, and then chase you with the one leg he got. Yeah, yeah he would, bro. Using this as a clue, I looked into it further and found an article from Clutch City Boxing dedicated to a guy named Chuck Mintz, who was the same last name as William Henry Mintz Jr. from the first obituary. Now only half convinced, I kept searching until I found a Billy Conforto poster on Redbubble that was in tribute to William Billy Conforto. So there was finally solid evidence that Theo was telling the truth about Billy Conforto. So I must say, rest in peace Billy Conforto. It's good to know Theo doesn't lie when it comes to dead people. But is he honest about some of his crazy life stories where weird stuff happened? And a bunch of infected monkeys got out and they let us out of uh, YMCA summer camp to help the police look for him, bro. Now this sounds unusual, but it is not impossible. I remember surrounding a couple of chimps outside of a Kenny Rogers Roasters, dude, off a of Highway 190. That's a true story, dude. I first took the subreddit to see if anyone found evidence of this, and I saw someone quoting an article from Sun News Services that was titled, Two Dozen Monkeys Escaped from the Research Lab, and it was dated in October 1998, which is the same year Theo's pedo t-shirt was caught. I then tried to find this article, but it didn't seem to exist online. So I continued my search, and I eventually stumbled across an article from the Chronicle of Higher Education that gave me an answer I wasn't expecting. The article was titled, Two Dozen Monkeys Escape from Toulon Center, and it was dated in October 1998. So Theo was telling the truth here as well, but still not entirely convinced. I looked into some of his other wild stories. I would do some cocaine at thousand, put on these different vests. How I many had. did you buy again? I don't know. I spent too much on them, but <laughs> I would probably say <laughs> the, the priciest one I had was probably about two hundred ten dollars. Nice. Damn. Yeah. And so I would get fucked up and put these vests on and put on sunglasses and not no like Buffalo Bill shit, but at least partying by myself, you mm -hmm. know. And one time I was making a smoothie, you know, because I, you know, I have. I got like a new, I don't know what kind of blender it is, but it's pretty nice. And I was making like a nice smoothie and I'm fucking coked up. I'm partying, you know, mm. I'm living high on the hog. Got these two vests on maybe, right? And I thought, I, <laughs> dude, I thought I heard something outside, right? Definitely a crazy story, but I wouldn't say this is out of Theo Vaughn's nature. So I leave out of my apartment to go in the hallway, lock myself out with the blender going. <laughs> 2 30 in the morning coked up out of my brain right <laughs> now i have to go to my landlord dude uh, who lives r right down the hall oh no and tell him like hey man 2 30 in the morning I'm, i got locked out locked and the blender's out, on the blender's son going. oh my god he must have hated you oh the blender shorts out and smoke happens the fire uh, <sighs> alarm starts going off in the building right as i'm at his door knocking right oh my god so now he's pissed and he's like what's going on and I didn't know what to say. I told him that I was throwing a late Christmas party, dude. <laughs> it was fucking end of January. How old were you at the time? Huh? Oh, this is two and a half years ago. So I was 35. <laughs> I was 35. <laughs> 
I mean, it would be impossible to fact check this, but even without evidence, I can believe Theo here as he has discussed his cocaine addiction at length in a way only a former addict could. So it's clear that the stories Theo tells are actually true. But I know the guy I saw interviewing Trump and Vance didn't seem like the usual Theo Vaughn I know, so I stopped trying to look into his stories and I started to question his character instead. Was he, uh, who was like a first person you met like that? Cause Atlanta, did you get to meet Too Boosie? Short. You met Too Short? That yeah. was one I really wanted to take a picture with. And I was at the airport. And he passed away, huh? No. Didn't he? Can you look up Too Short Deceased? I think he did pass away, man, I'm sorry. No, that's-, that's I'm sorry, man. No, that's too tall. No, he's still here. Praise God, baby, damn. Now it's normal for Theo to say wild stuff and to be funny when he's wrong at times. Yo, what's up, Black? Your boy just got on here and dropped the M-bomb, man. I didn't hear it. How the fuck you ain't here? Bitch, you was on here calling. Oh yeah, you're right, right. I heard it. What? Um. What the fuck? How the hell you ain't hear it the first time? I didn't want to hear it, man. I'm, I'm sick of hearing that shit. But is this all an act? And is he just trying to come across as deliberately wrong? Because at other times, he presents a completely different character. Nothing changes if nothing changes, man. And I'm not preaching at you. I'm just, uh, I just want to remind you because, you know, I've spent a lot of time in my life sitting around wanting things to change. Um, and not being able to make them change and, and not thinking I could. And I wish somebody had told me that earlier sometimes. That in order for something to change, there needs to be change. Here, Theo comes across as a very down-to-earth, humble guy. You know, I know I'm not doing good when I start getting real judgmental. Because judgment keeps me away from you. It keeps me away from someone. Oh, look at them. Look at that. Oh, look, they're like that. Oh, they have that. Oh. Now, sometimes it works to inspire me. You know, I judge the rich, I judge the greedy. You know, and some of those, and sometimes it works to inspire me and that's, I felt like those things were necessary. But I'm at a point in my life now where I'm able to look and see, okay, is this still serving me well? Or is this just a thing that's keeping me away from people? And then at other times, like in the Trump episode, he can be serious and insightful. One thing that you did, um, recently we had Bernie Sanders on. Right. And interesting. I, and I know <laughs> that's very interesting. Certainly, um, you guys don't agree on a lot of things, but uh, I think you both acknowledge how horribly rigged the healthcare system is against the American people. Um, because hospitals and insurance companies get away with hiding their prices from all of us, and literally they can charge whatever they want. You know, it's like you sign up and say, Yes, I'll pay. You trust the hospital, but then you get home and the bill is. It's whatever, you know, which pretty much feels like some form of extortion to me. So where does this alternating character come from and who is the real Theo Vaughn? I wasn't cared for as a child and I'm not trying to self-pity. I'm just looking at what was a part of my life that I wasn't cared for as a child. So therefore I took it on myself. Oh, if I was better, if I was perfect, then I would be loved. You know, I'm not perfect enough. I'm not good enough, you know? I'm not good enough for my mother to see me. I'm not good enough um, for my father to stay alive. Well, Theo did have a very rough and unique childhood, but that doesn't create split personalities. For some reason as a kid, I, you know, nobody explained to me what was going on or how things worked or that dad was getting, you know, I just knew my dad was older and that he was not gonna be alive for a long time. and. As a child, I thought, maybe if I'm perfect, if I'm perfect, you know, that my life would be different. Well, it seems like Theo has never lost that desire to be perfect in all situations, and this has definitely shaped his character and explains his general goofy nature of trying to make people laugh. Do you think it's going to get to a point, right, where if we start losing jobs, right, and there's less jobs and more people are on, like, OnlyFans, right? Mm -hmm that you're basically gonna have chicks out there like literally people women holding each other at gunpoint like you know subscribe to my pussy stuff like that uh, like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't know what you're saying you know help jamie, <laughs> jamie can you pull up some help 
<laughs> Pull up some help. I need some help, man. <laughs> I'm not sure who the real Theo Vaughn is, and that's a testament to his genius. Try to not finish your cocaine. I will watch you try. What do they put in it? Cigarettes? I took three showers in 10 minutes, son. And dried off after each one, bro. You don't know me. He knows how to adapt to different situations and lean into the stories or topics that he knows people will like and admire him for, whilst avoiding stories and jokes that everyone else has used or heard of before. I just always get mad about everybody just making fun of Trump. It's just the easiest. It's like, we get, not, not John. I mean, John does great impersonations. He's a fucking superstar. Just, every day, it's just so many comedians. Like, Trump, fuck Trump. I know, we get it, dog. You don't like him, dude. Move on to the next thing. He knows the best source for original jokes is from his own life experience. And I don't think any viewer truly knows how much of his stories are true, false, or exaggerated. I walked about three blocks, got into a regular taxi, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I even made him pop the trunk just to make sure that spare tire wasn't shooting up in the back, you know? He is able to pull this off and still come across as relatable, really likable, and serious and stern when necessary. That is what makes Theo Vaughn so great. And he does seem to be telling the truth in most of the stories, but his true character is something even he's still searching for. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the Internet Hard Drive for more entertaining comedian videos. And if you want to see other comedians' interesting stories, click here to watch.